I know um, to speak to both of you. But let's go to Serhi first of all, if we may, because you are there. You are feeling every minute of this war. What are your reactions to that ban being lifted? Well, I hope it will not be lifted in the first place. Um, mm. I think that Wimbledon last year was the very only and sole institution which showed that there is uh, some moral values above any money equivalent, I would say. Um, and it's not a matter whether Russian athletes and Belarusian athletes will be able to participate under no flag or no nation or they will sign any waiver because at the end of the day, it's going to be the same situation as with Sabalenka, which actually openly supports Lukashenko. Uh, and then once it happened inside Belarus, it was presented as a great victory of the country and the regime itself. Sehi, what's it like at the moment for you over there? I know you're on the front line, but can you tell us what the atmosphere is like? And equally, how the Ukrainian people feel about mm. big sporting events, either welcoming Russian or Belarusian mm. players or not having them there? How does that go down? Well, Kiev, thankfully, is not a front line. We're only being hit by rockets. Uh, I've returned to Kiev because I have a close friend, which will be buried today. Um, so it, it, we feel, of course, strongly as, as in general as a nation towards what's happening and how Russia is trying to find its way back into civil society. And predominantly, it all looks like, you know, everybody's saying, well, you know, every individual has the right of their own opinion. But then yet we're not talking about opinions and we're not talking about any political stuff. It's just whether killing is OK or not OK. And tennis players cannot answer that question. They cannot. They're just being silent for the whole year long. And mm. for me, it's a bit immoral to be able to step out and just, you know, ride the wave of neutrality. I mean, I'm sure you're very emotional about having to go to that funeral. Who wouldn't be on any day? And I wonder how hearing that organisations are discussing lifting the ban and the way that they have dealt with that ban, I wonder how it affects directly morale of people there, which we've all applauded and and saluted and, you know, thought has been wonderful. How does that affect morale? Well, it's surprising, I would say. Uh, it's not going to demoralise. I mean, it's not going to make us stop. Uh, the problem here is that Ukraine cannot afford itself to stop fighting because once we will, we'll be slaughtered, uh, rolled over, cleansed and uh, disappear. So for us, the no war messages and all that sort, it, it just doesn't work. And unfortunately, or luckily for all the European people who have not been in Ukraine and they did not understand, they do not understand what actually is going on, that the, the war is waged not upon the army or the soldiers, it's waged upon the nation. Uh, and this is the most ridiculous act of terror what the Russian is doing for the past year. Yeah. And yet trying to implement them back into the system of civil society will be a big mistake. OK, well, let's go to Gail on this. Gail, you, you competed at the highest level as an elite yeah. uh, sports person, badminton world champion. You've competed in Olympics. And you've just heard firsthand there from Serhi, who is fighting for his country, uh, about the impact that this has on them and the morale. What are your thoughts for these Russian and Belarusian tennis players and the All England having had this ban, maybe reversing mm. it? I mean, first and foremost, this is just an incredible, difficult situation. Sahi, you are doing an amazing job. And seeing, hearing your emotion and seeing you, uh, oh, my God, my, my thoughts are with you today and the Ukrainian people. This is not an easy subject at all. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how we're going to come out of this in, in a way. And maybe I'm being very naive about it, but when sport and politics mix... You know, as athletes, this is where we just want to, you know, go. We just want to do our sports. You know, we just want to play. And when a country, you can't help where you're born. And when you want to just compete and then your your nation's politics gets caught up with just your sport, then, you know, what, how do we how do we cross this? You know, how do we solve this problem? Because it is a problem. My my view is that the, the lifting the ban and competing under a neutral flag will hurt those Russian athletes massively. If you told me that I couldn't compete under a British flag, my dream was to compete for my country, to win medals for my country. So I think you're hurting the Russian athletes by not being able to speak about Russia to, or anything like that. We, I don't know what the, 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 what the 
solution is, the ideal solution. There is no ideal solution in this horrible, horrible situation. But all we can try and do is actually promote that sports has a way of showing that you know maybe it can bring people together maybe you know the 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 messages of you know no war on the on the tv cameras can actually show that they're you know everyone's an individual and there are russians out there that don't support this and help hopefully sport can do that well we saw in the australian open didn't we the sabalenko who's a belarusian tennis mm. player did actually win uh and when they presented her with the trophy they had a name on the trophy but they didn't put her country yeah. engraved on the trophy as well. So underneath her yeah. name, alongside the others, uh, you can see the, the countries of the previous winners, but not hers. Mm -hmm. And I wonder whether the, the other thing, when you look at the clumsy nature of how that feels, Gail, you know, we know that Putin and the Russians aren't letting the information get to the Russian people. So maybe the way that the Russian people understand what's going on, and it isn't a war that's been pushed upon them, and it's a war that they are provoking that when they see that they can't compete in the World Cup, they can't compete in the Champions yeah. League, they can't compete in yeah. Formula One, that maybe it's not the rhetoric that they're getting in their country and maybe it's, maybe it's something else that they need to find out about. It is true. I mean, like I say, you know, I, when, I don't want the word Russia, I don't want the Russian flag anywhere near in sport right now. This is why we have to try and do what we can in sport. And even these little things like not putting, you know, Belarusia Bella next to the name, any little thing, I mean, it's all we can do. I mean, it, you've, I've been racking my brains about trying to think of like how we can help this, you know, with sports, you know, show the message across. But oh, we, this is a very, very difficult, difficult situation. Yeah, it's not easy at all. And no. sir, no, it is not easy for anyone, isn't it? And least of all uh, for Serhi and those that are in Kiev. Um, uh, with the, the, the club hasn't yet announced that they will have a ban or their decision. And if it brings you any comfort, sir, we've been running a Twitter poll here on this programme uh, asking if Wimbledon should keep the ban on Russian players and Belarusian players as well. 73% have said yes and 27% said no. So our viewers certainly would like it if that was still in place. And we wish you well with everything you're dealing with there too. Thank you both for joining us this morning and, and yeah. so he's trying to stay safe. <laughs>